I don't think I've ever been this nervous doing something. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel for another super exciting video, I hope. Anyway, in this video we're going to be doing a little bit of uh, epoxy pouring on top of a live edge board. Never poured epoxy in my life. Uh, the live edge board is beautiful so I'm really nervous to screw it up. A friend of ours in a lake has his little portable uh, sawmill that he brings out in the winter. He cuts down some trees out in the bush and then he cuts these beautiful, beautiful boards. Uh, my wife somehow was able to swindle him into uh, giving her a three foot board. Not sure how she did that. She's very persistent, let me tell you. But anyway, we're gonna show you the board and uh, we're gonna get going. Here is the beautiful live edge board we're gonna be pouring epoxy on. Nice and thick. It weighs 15, 20 pounds, it's a heavy board. So the plan is to get the epoxy on this side here. And uh, all I'm going to do, I think, I'm just going to sand the edges. My wife does like um, the rough look and it's not cut quite square here, but it's plain beautifully. Jay did a really nice job of planing it. And uh, we got the live edge on one side. Now, if I'm not mistaken, guys, this is birch from a tree that had fallen in the woods. And like I said, he cut it up and made some beautiful board strips. I can't wait to see the colors that are going to pop out of this once the epoxy is put on here. Just gorgeous. All right, let's get to uh, warming up the epoxy. All right, so here you see we have the epoxy warming up in some lukewarm water. Uh, I read the instructions, it's supposed to be around 73 degrees Fahrenheit uh, so that it pours properly. And the bottles have to be warm to the touch, so we'll just let those sit for a few minutes and warm up. Okay, one thing I did find out is the epoxy instructions say that the ambient room temperature needs to be uh, over 73 degrees Fahrenheit. So, as you can see, uh, we're getting there. I've got the heater on. I know, the heater on at the beginning of September doesn't make any sense. Got the heater on, I'm just going to warm up the garage a little bit and uh, yeah, we'll take it from there. Well, I guess first we got to get our saw horses set up to put the uh, piece of wood on and uh, through the magic of video editing. Here's a little did you know for you guys. It's a little trick uh, to get the right size sandpaper for your actual sander. I don't know if it's by design or if it's just by luck, but a very easy way to actually get them to the proper size is you just fold them. One fold in the center, open it back up, fold it center the other way, like so. down, fold it the opposite way again, pushing down, and we're going to do the same on this side, fold it again, the opposite way, there you go.
And there's a did you know? Okay, so if you see, I've given it a nice light little sand on the top. And the reason why I sanded the top was to get all my finger oil off of it. Uh, it's been handled numerous times by a bunch of people and uh, the product instructions do say that it has to be nice and clean, free of any debris or oil. It also says that the environment has to be dust free. Well, I was just sanding. So the environment's not going to be dust free. I understand it's an epoxy that I'm actually pouring. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the vacuum cleaner. I'm going to vacuum all around. I'm going to vacuum the floor where I'm going to be walking, just not to kick up any dust. I might let the garage air settle for probably 15 to 20 minutes. Might go in and have a coffee. And uh, I'll come back out, we'll mix the epoxy, and uh, we'll begin to pour. Wish me luck. All right, we're about 10 minutes later. I just came back into the garage, but I shut the heater off. So now I notice that I'm only at about 62 degrees. Not good, I gotta be up over 70. So I just turned the heater back on and we're gonna have to wait. All right, how do you know how much product you need? I took the coverage right here, gives you the square footage. Then what I did is I measured the board. Figured out my total milliliters. This calculation is pretty simple. We take our 1.4 feet and we multiply that by our three feet, which was the 36 inches that we saw on the tape. And that gives us our total square footage of 4.2 feet. Okay, so remembering that we have 472 milliliters total, simply go to Google. We're gonna search for a converter calculator from milliliters to pints. We'll plug in our 472 milliliters, which converts it to 0 0.9975 pints. So if you remember, four square feet, we need one pint. And if we have 4.2 square feet, one pint should be plenty. Okay, I'm really taking my time with this project. I'm following the instructions to a T. Uh, I mean, it's a $35, $36 product. I only have one shot at this. Once you mix the epoxies, that's it, you're done. It's an irreplaceable piece of wood. It's one of a kind. I don't want to destroy it or ruin it. And uh, yeah, I got nothing else to say about that. Okay, so I have everything that the manufacturer recommends. I have my stir cups, I have my stir sticks, and I have my brush. This is a really cheap um, Dollarama buck store bargain store brush. So what I've done is I've uh, pulled pulled as much as I can off it. I vacuumed the crap out of it just to make sure I don't get any little debris or material that comes off of it into my clear coat because that would really suck. Now, the only thing I'm not following manufacturer's directions with is because I don't have them are smooth cups. They say to use smooth cups so it's easier to scrape. I have a pretty good feeling about these. I should be able to scrape these fine with those big stir sticks over there. So I'm not too concerned. All right. Well, I guess there's no better time than the present. The wood is ready. The temperature is there. Let's mix this stuff and pour it. I don't think I've ever been this nervous doing something. Probably because it's my wife's and I don't want to screw that up. Ooh, I'm still waiting. I just, uh, ooh. All right, just warming up the bottles a little bit again. I warmed them up in warm water, uh, but the instructions do say the product has to be warm and that's to allow it to thin so that the air bubbles will rise to the top. So these are nice and warm.
right, guys. Well, here we have it. The finished product. As you can see, it's leveled off very nicely. Now we just have to wait for it to set. Notice I use the heat gun at the end. The instructions say you can just give it some light heat and it'll help uh, raise the air bubbles. Uh, so it's hard to see if there's any defects in it. Very nerve wracking, I'll tell you. I can see maybe one little spot right over here. And I can see one little spot right here. And we just want those spots to level out. So I will grab my heat gun again. And we will just hit those. One thing I did forget, and the instructions didn't really say this, but one thing I did forget is because it's a self-leveling product, I totally just missed having it level. I mean, I should have made sure it was nice and level before I poured it, but... Well, we'll wait and see what happens. Right now, it looks really good. And as soon as I started mixing the epoxy, a couple of moths come out of nowhere, probably because I heated the garage. A couple of moths come out of the maybe from behind some light fixtures or something, started flying around, freaking me right out because I don't want one landing in this, so. All right, guys, here we are six hours later. Let's take a look at it. I am very pleased. I mean, look at the shine on that guy. Now, it's not dry. Uh, it's not dry to the touch. It's still very, very tacky. Uh, I think they said it takes four hours to set and then at the temperature it is in the garage right now, about 48 hours to cure. So I'm not going to take a chance and move it. Uh, what I did do is I unstuck it from my table because it was stuck. Uh, so I could very well right now pick it up and bring it in the house. And uh, I just might do that because I do see some little flies flying around and I would really hate for one to get stuck. That would really suck. But uh, you want to take a closer look, you can see the shine. Here we go, look at that, guys. That is absolutely beautiful. Now you're gonna say, hey, is it perfect? No, it's not perfect, but it's damn great. There are a few little spots, like that little low spot right over there. That could be an issue. Now, if I really felt like it, if I felt really ambitious, I could mix up another batch and go ahead and pour a second coat on there. But at 30, $34, $38 in and around there somewhere uh, for an actual kit, I think this will just be fine. It'll be a really nice centerpiece on our island in our kitchen. And uh, I'm very pleased. Well, friends, that's the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching me lose my mind and freak out uh, pouring this uh, on this beautiful piece of wood for my wife. Uh, I think it turned out great. I'm satisfied with it. And uh, as long as she's happy with it, that's all that really matters. Uh, she's a great supporter of mine, uh, always has great faith in everything I do. I'm sure she's going to love it. So once again, guys, thank you very much for following along. And uh, don't forget to subscribe if you like what you see. And uh, we'll see you next time. Take care. I don't think I've ever been this nervous doing something. <laughs> <laughs>